Ely, welcome to WPFW. Hi, hi. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's it's my pleasure. Uh, it's my pleasure. So uh, uh, we uh, looking forward to your performance uh, Monday night uh, at uh, at the uh, Decatur House Museum that that uh, Burnett Thompson's putting on. But well, let's go back a few years. And how did you get into to starting playing playing the piano and uh, the eclectic approach that you have? I come from a genera- I come from four generations. Well, I'm the fourth generation of pianists, classical musicians in my family. Wow. So I sort of grew up in a music school. My great-grandmother taught the neighborhood piano lessons. My mother has a doctorate in classical in theory. And so I just come from a classical music tradition. Oddly enough, I'm the first jazz musician in my family. But my mother made sure to try to expose me to as much as she could in the Philadelphia area. I come from Camden, New Jersey, so she did as much as she could to expose me to all the different musical possibilities in the area. And that's how I ended up meeting the jazz young lion of my generation, such as Amir Questlove Thompson, mm-hmm. Chris McBride, Lil John Roberts, Joey DiFrancesco, he and I actually had the same jazz piano teacher. Wow. For a long time. Okay. This man's name is Gerald Price. Mm-hmm. So, as far as my eclectic style, the thing that attracted me most to jazz was the fact that there were styles at all. That, to me, was a very amazing thing. That was a very exciting thing to me. That was a thing that became a goal of mine was to have my own style to be like Miles Davis to be like John Coltrane to be like Herbie Hancock to be like Art Tatum people who have very distinctive styles but only a small so to me creating one's own style McCoy Tyner that's super identifiable just became a very attractive thing and so that's what drew my interest in. So I've always perceived creating my own style and creating my own distinctions within the media. You know, I, I was at the the first Death Lonely Smoke Piano competition that Marcus Roberts won, and I, I attended just a, a, a whole slew of them. But I see you were a first prize winner of, of, the, of the competition uh, at, at some point. Uh, what year was that? 98. Uh-huh. Fantastic. Sorry, 99. 99. 99, okay, okay, yeah. 98, 99. Right. <laughs> One of those. At this point. <laughs> I think it was 99. You know, kind of hard to go, go back to 20 something years, 25 years. In any case, that was remarkable. And, uh, and, and the folks that you worked with uh, along the way, uh, in addition to the Jazz, the Lincoln Center Orchestra, people like Elvin Jones, Cassandra Wilson, Roy Hargrove, you know, you've, you've had the experience uh, of of really accompanying some, some major artists along the way. Absolutely. That was my goal in my 20s was to get my apprenticeship in. So so tell me, uh, what, what drew you to, to being very eclectic in terms of approaching uh, the, the music that you play, uh, expanding beyond the, the, you know, the jazz repertoire, uh, reinterpreting uh, uh, songs by, by rock artists, for, for example? Yes, and, and, and sorry, what was well, the question? Well, the question was, was what, what drew you to, to expand the repertoire, to, to really go beyond, uh, you know, what, what a lot of people of your, your generation or jazz pianists sort of stick close to the jazz repertoire, but you've expanded it by playing uh, uh, and reimagining songs by, by Nirvana, Coldplay, and people like that. Understood. Got you. Yeah, well, it was interesting. I have had some very turbulent emotional moments during the course of my life and career. And it turns out that my emotions and my emotional needs led me to that kind of music that had lyrics that spoke to some of the inner turmoil that I was going through, Mm. but also had music that was designed to capacitate 
that kind of stuff. So it's a combination. For instance, if you think of something like a song like T for Two, where the lyrics are, picture you upon my knee, just me for you and you for me, just T for two and two for T alone. Yeah. Right? So if I'm experiencing severe depression and panic attack mm, mm. like that, then those lyrics aren't what I need to really express myself how I need to. So the closest thing that was available for me was the music of John Coltrane and Elvin. However, there weren't really a lot of lyrics involved with that. But when I came across some of these more angst and hard rock songs where the lyrics went stuff like crawling in my skin these wounds they will not heal fear is how I fall mm. confusing what is real well that's exactly what I was feeling you mentioned the Thelonious Monk competition I never received a record deal. In fact, I've never had a major record deal in my whole career, even though I'm an elite pianist in wow. the medium. I've mm -hmm. never had a record deal. Mm -hmm. So the types of disappointment and lack of understanding that I've been through spoke or was spoken to a lot by lyrics like that crawling in my skin. These wounds, they will not heal. Fear is how I fall. Confusing what is real. You know, I was a little bit too immature, too young to understand a lot of aspects about business and how people were choosing things and, you know, what they were seeing about me that they didn't like or didn't feel confident to invest in. But I wasn't trained in any of that stuff in music school. I was very idealistic. Sure. Mm -hmm. So... My idealism was getting me crushed. However, it was that same idealism that gave me the courage and the boldness to continue to, to believe in myself and in my original spark, my core love for the art form we call jazz and the styles of it. So when I became aware of this specific type of rock music that was very angst oriented and <clears throat> had lyrics like that I became very curious I became very excited I found something to excuse me <clears throat> to pour all of these sort of panicky and depression sort of feelings into but also because a lot of those songs are sort of like four chords or five, it was very similar, not the same, but similar to the modal explorations of John Coltrane. Sure, okay. okay. And the free jazz exploration. Mm -hmm. And so I started to see, wait a minute, if I can figure out a way to play this stuff solo piano, I can actually go inside of the piano where all the metal strings are and stuff and I can actually simulate some of those <clears throat> some of those uh -huh. sort of noise <laughs> okay. sounds okay. that you get mm -hmm. from the rock music some of that sort of stuff that is emotionally designed to trigger and evoke those sorts of feelings or you know the need to deal with frustration in some kind of way <laughs> You know, those kinds of sounds. Okay. <laughs> and so, as I explored the piano and the other sounds that the piano could make from the inside, inside where the harp is, I began to become more excited as I noticed, wow, there's a whole untouched territory in here that I can shift toward the evoking of some, of some of these arena rock sort of sounds that I hear in an arena, but at the same time, I can serve my own 
emotional cathartic need but at the same time I can be more commercially viable because clearly the jazz industry did not find me commercially viable okay right so, so, so you took it to your ironic, own direction right yeah so in an ironic twist the music that helped me through my crushing panic attack and depression which were brought on by being ignored or rejected at least by the jazz industry led me to become Elu and become stronger and develop the style that I set out to develop in the first place. I didn't realize that my journey would take me into the heart of rock and roll and celeb culture and stuff like that because that's not what I got into the music for. I never even listened to rock until I was 30 years old. Wow, okay. But mm -hmm. the, 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 the fact that I didn't get a record deal after winning the Monk competition broke my heart. <laughs> and so that's when I decided to take matters into my own hands. Well, 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 you really did, and it's establishing yourself as an artist and, and with, the, with the activities that, that you've uh, fulfilled your, your music through is, is just mind-boggling in terms of the festivals that you've performed at and the uh, the talks that you've given and, and the unique approach that you, you've had with the piano. So tell us, what will you be doing Monday night uh, at the uh, Decatur uh, House Museum uh, on Jackson Place? We're going to be swinging. Okay. We're going to be swinging. <laughs> and we're, you know, the, the prodigal son has returned. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> He'll kill the fatty calf get my gold chain ready uh-huh we're gonna i'm coming down i'm coming down to dc to swing okay <laughs> we're gonna play stuff from i mean not we i <laughs> me and my 10 fingers uh i'm going to play stuff from all parts of duke ellington's repertoire i mean wow, I'm talking okay to, mm -hmm. from cottontail to stuff from the sacred concerts to <laughs> uh i might improvise something i actually you know what i've got a tune that i wrote on one of duke ellington's pianos believe it or not i was when i was working on the sacred concerts when i was a child i performed with johnny cole wow okay. other musicians in philadelphia sure. we did duke ellington's sacred concerts and to get some of that music we had to um contact and meet up with Ruth Ellington oh, awesome. in New York. So I had a chance to go to Park Avenue and sit down and play on one of Duke Ellington's pianos and I was so affected by it that I literally wrote a song for her on his piano and it's called Ruth and Blue. Oh my goodness. Because she always wore these blue shades. Sure. Sure. So I'm going to play that while I'm down there. I mean, I'm going to play Duke, we're going to play some Duke Ellington blues. I mean, I'll, I'll play some Duke Ellington and train, you know? Okay. So we're we're uh. going to get down, we're, we're going to get down to it because, you know, I got the rock and roll out the way. Now we're we going to get down to some jazz. We're going to get, get down to what I got into the music for. Well, it sounds like uh, Burnett Thompson's got the right pianist for the celebration of Ellington on Monday. Again, the concert's at the Decatur House Museum at 748 Jackson Place Northwest. It's been a part of a whole series of uh, pianists that Burnett Thompson has, has been presenting. And tickets are available at uh, pianojazz.com. If you just go to pianojazz.com, you can uh, catch up with tickets for Elu's uh, performance on Monday. And uh, uh, Burnett's uh, put a link up with uh, some music with uh, you and Theo Croker, so I'm going to gonna, uh, 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 click that on in a second. But but again, uh, I want to thank you for calling in tonight. I'm sorry we had a little glitch with the phones coming through, but I, I fixed it myself. <laughs> my pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah. Elu, it's, it's been a pleasure talking with you. I'm looking forward to, to seeing you Monday with, with, a, with an Ellington performance as we listen to you with Theo. And thanks again for calling in. Hey, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me, and I can't wait to see you all and swing with y'all. Okay, again, this is uh, Monday night at Jackson Decatur House Museum, and the concert <laughs> begins at 7 o'clock, and you go to pianojazz.com for ticket information. <laughs>